Good day to all of you. Welcome to EC Physics. Learn physics as easy as one, two, three. Through this video, we are going to discuss about the introduction part of lesson sound, which is meant for students of class eight. Sound is a very, very important form of energy in our day-to-day -day life, right? In a day, we hear thousands of different varieties of sound. Some of them are very pleasing to hear, some are very annoying, some are loud, some are feeble, some are sharp. There are different varieties of sound, right? Do you know what is a sound or how is it produced? I'm going to show you a pleasing form of sound. All of you loves to hear guitar, right? How does a guitar produce sound? When you look it, at it closely, when you play the guitar or when someone play the guitar, what they normally do is they pluck the strings and release. During this process, they are trying to create vibrations in the string. And these vibrations are coming out to be beautiful sound, right? Very pleasing sound. So in a guitar, sound is produced due to vibrations. So what is the meaning of the term vibration? Vibrations are nothing but the to and fro motion, which means the back and forth motion of an object about its mean position. Does only guitar produce sound due to its vibration? What about the other musical instruments? Yes, obviously, all the musical instruments are producing sound because of vibration in one way or the other. Let me show you how does different musical instruments produce vibration and hence produce sound. When you look at instruments like obina, sitar, violin, all these are producing sound due to vibrations created in the stretched string. But there are other instruments like tabla, mridangam, drum. These are producing sound because of the vibrations in the stretched memory. And there are some other category of instruments, shenai, flute, mouth organ. These are producing sound due to vibrations created in air column. Does vibrations create sound only in musical instruments? No, no. Every material which is producing sound is due to vibrations. So we can conclude that sound is produced by a vibrating body. You know that if you stretch a rubber band and pluck it down and release, you can hear a feeble sound, right? So any kind of vibration can produce sound. And when I'm talking, you're able to hear me, right? Which means I'm also producing sound. How does human beings produce sound? Yes, we have a special organ in our throat, which is called the voice box or the larynx. It is the upper part of the windpipe. There are two vocal cords stretched across the voice box and there will be a small slit between them. When lungs force air through the slit, this stretched membrane vibrates and hence produce sound. Let me show you how the voice box of a human being looks like. You can see here there are two vocal cords and there is a small opening, right? And when air is passing through the small opening, the stretched membranes will vibrate and this is how human beings are producing sound. Depending on the level of vibration, the pitch will be different, the amplitude will be different, the loudness will be different. In our next coming video, we'll discuss about these technical terms. What is pitch, amplitude, loudness, what, does, what is the difference between feeble sound and a loud sound? So let's wait for the next video to get to know more about the characteristics of sound. Now, when I'm talking, does it require or does sound require a medium for its propagation? Yes, obviously. That is the reason why we are not able to hear the sound produced due to explosions in sun and the terrestrial bodies. 
because sound has to travel through vacuum and it cannot reach our ears because sound will not be able to travel through vacuum or empty space. It do require a medium for its propagation. What kind of medium sound requires? It can travel in any kind of medium like solid state, liquid state or gaseous state, but vacuum will not permit the propagation of sound. Example of sound traveling through solid is you all might have played with the can telephone in your childhood, right? As you can see here, the sound travels through the thread, but which is a solid medium. A whale is able to listen to the reflected sound and this is how the whales catch the prey. So there it is proved that sound can travel through water and we are able to listen to each other when we talk. There is an intervening medium between us, which is nothing but air. Air is a mixture of gas. So sound can travel through solid, liquids or gases. So today's topic is a very simple topic to conclude with. I will tell you what are things we discussed today that sound is produced due to vibrations in any body and it requires a medium for its propagation and sound cannot travel through vacuum. Simple, right? Let's wait for the next video to get to know more characteristic features of sound. How does sound differ from one person to another person? And why some sound is pleasant to hear and something is unpleasant to hear? We will discuss about different characteristics of sound in our forthcoming video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day to all of you.